On Canada Day, I remember with great fondness the TV documentary Talking with Americans featuring Rick Mercer. Some of the wild and wonderful things that he was able to convince our American brothers and sisters of, such as the fact that Canada had only recently legalized the stapler, that you can come and visit our national igloo, and one of my favorites, our national pastime is pelting caribou with timbits. <laughs> On Canada Day also, though, I really I thank the Lord for the many freedoms that we enjoy in this country, freedoms that are not enjoyed by many others around the world. You know, contrary to popular belief, our identity as Canadians isn't hockey or maple syrup or even Tim Hortons. It's much richer than that. One of the great images used to describe our country is that of a mosaic, because we have so many people who have come here from different lands, our ancestors, and we've managed to come together to make this country and the world a better place. At least that's, that's the vision, or this mosaic or this tapestry that is held together by so many different people. And it was our first Prime Minister, Sir Johnny MacDonald, who took decisive action to turn that dream into reality by connecting the country from sea to sea. He had a dream to unite a divided Canada by building a railway. And he did that. He believed that our country united was far stronger than it was as separate parts. And that in order to unite, we must have a shared purpose, a shared identity. And that's all great and good. We benefit from that now, but you know where that was rooted? That was rooted in Scripture. You can say what you want about how it happened, or the man himself, or the things that our country has done since then, good and bad. But this vision of unity is captured in our motto, ad mare usque ad mare, which is Latin from, for from sea to sea. And that's lifted directly from the Psalms. Psalm 72, verse 8 reads, He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This country is rooted in our Christian faith. It was assumed. It was lived. It was the air we breathe. It's part and parcel of who we are. I think we may have come adrift a little bit from that original Christian vision, which is actually normal because vision tends to leak. It leaks. If you kept vision in a bucket, it would be a leaky one. You know that old saying, there's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza? That's what it is. That bucket needs to constantly be topped up. And although the church has done many things well since the founding of our country, Maybe we haven't emphasized enough that if we're a dominion, then we also need a dominus, which is more Latin. It simply means Lord. Jesus is Lord. The scriptures say that again and again because they want us to emphasize it again and again because of how important it is. Jesus wants to be Lord of our lives, Lord of this land. Because of that, all we have belong to him. All that we do should be done for his glory. But of course, the world is always changing. And so each generation needs to hear anew this simple truth, this vision, this Christian message with new fervor and conviction. And so here we are, wanting that vision to be renewed in our time for the sake of our church, our people, our country. We can look around and see that maybe there are some signs that that vision leaked a little bit. We can see some churches that are emptying out, maybe an absence of young people, an anti-Christian culture cropping up here and there. And it's filled a lot of people with a lot of different emotions. Anger, apathy, hopelessness, fear. People wonder what the future is going to hold because they see these things in the present. And somehow we have to try to square that with what Jesus says to us in the gospel today. 
Jesus says to us, don't fear, but believe. Don't fear because I have the power to make things right. I have the power to bring new life. And he demonstrated that for us today. That power has not departed from the church. And it never will. There's a very important ingredient in the mix here that we can never forget. It's the reason for our hope, and it is the Holy Spirit. The Archbishop reminded us of that when he visited us about a month ago. It is the reason we can believe that God is active in our lives. He is active in our church. And he gives new hope and new life in every single time and season. And so renewal doesn't depend on us. Yes, it needs our cooperation, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the beautiful marriage of our community with the Holy Spirit, his work. It's always been that way. The vision that the Archbishop has put forward for our diocese, which is linked to what Pope Francis has been saying, it is all dependent, it all rises and falls on the Holy Spirit, which can be kind of scary because we can't control the Spirit. And we shouldn't try. We shouldn't try to control God. But it has been the Holy Spirit that has worked new signs and new wonders in every age. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom, the power, and the anointing of God. The Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son that brings about new life in our lives, in our parishes, in our church, in the whole world. And just as God breathed His Spirit into Adam, just as the Spirit was released upon the church from the cross, God promises that new outpouring of the Spirit for us. Because the Lord says, I have come that you may have life. And have that life in abundance, not just a little bit, but in abundance. The Lord says, I don't want things to die, I want them to live. In the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, it said, God did not make death. And he does not delight in the death of the living. In the gospel, we see Jairus going before Jesus and saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come. Come and lay your hands on her. And I know, I believe, that she will be made well. And Jesus went. And at this point, she had died. But Jesus says, No, she's only sleeping. And despite the laughter from the cynics, he raises her, raises her from the dead to the glory of God because the vision of God is for life, a life that is greater than death itself. And he demonstrated this most greatly from the cross. He heals what's wounded. He can heal what's bleeding in the church. He can bring life where it seems like there's a lack of hope even. But how much more should we have hope? We have seen in this community what it means to bring people together, to watch people's faith be nourished and grow, to reach out to the hurting and the broken and those who don't know Christ. We've known what it means for our gifts to be used for the glory of God. And I know these things for two reasons. Number one, many of you have told me as much. Number two, I've seen some of that for myself over the past year. The world may have changed, but our experience of the grace of God should still be fresh. Maybe we could, like everyone else, use a bit of a top-up in our vision buckets sometimes. But this is a community that has done great things and has seen great things and will do great things and see great things in the future. Because the Holy Spirit, who has been present, hasn't gone anywhere. The Holy Spirit is still very much here in our midst. So here are some of the things that I could see as possibilities in the near future. Our evangelizing efforts will bring new people into our parish, young and old alike, People who didn't know Jesus now know him. We'll continue to grow in our faith 
through new opportunities to learn, Bible studies and groups that meet together to study different elements of our faith will multiply and grow and we'll have to meet in homes for lack of space. The desire to spend time with Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament will grow and our adoration hours will grow with them. People will come from across the diocese to spend time in our chapel. New opportunities will arise and emerge for people to use their gifts and strengths in our parish. And as our parish grows, smaller cells of Christian community will be formed to ensure that everyone's spiritual needs are met, that people are known and loved and cared for. All of that and more. I don't know what the Holy Spirit might be up to here, but I know that the Holy Spirit is here. It's true that we don't know everything that's going to happen in the future. It's true that the world is going to keep changing and that we've endured some hard times as a church. That's true. But it's also true that God is with us, that God has poured out gifts on his church, including this church. And it's also true that God can make a way, even in difficult circumstances, because we have been given the Holy Spirit. And so we can accept Jesus' challenge, not to fear, but believe. Because the Lord's vision is for life, and life in abundance, in every age, including ours. And that is exactly what he will do for us.